All right, guys, I got in here. I will be your uh, extend the coach for today. We're just going to get into coupon codes today and high level. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen with you here. We're going to just, it's going to be a great short punchy video on coupon codes, everything that you need to know. And so this looks like not very much. Now there is some things to discuss in here though. We're going to talk about coupon code types and um, the limitation functions of the coupon codes and a couple of different ways that you can set up the coupon codes in high level. So um, let me back out of this here and I'm just going to flip over to high level. And so to get to coupon codes, first of all, just so you know, if you're new to high level, what you're going to do is you're going to click on payments on the left-hand side, payments. Now, to get to the payments section, you have to have Stripe integrated into your sub account in high level. If you do not have Stripe integrated, uh, most of the payment functionality is going to be sort of like grayed out for you to, to go to. Um, so that's an important mention so that you don't go to, you know, to the payment section. You're like, why can't I see anything? So to integrate Stripe, make sure you go to settings. And then if you go down to integrations and you scroll down, Oh, where'd it go? Where is my Stripe? There it is. So it'll say Stripe account right here. And now there's other sort of like payment types that they've uh, integrated into this. Like I'll show you what I mean if you click continue. There's some other, <clears throat> some other options in here other than Stripe. So I would imagine they're going to be changing that button to say payments or something that makes more sense than Stripe. Stripe is one of the gateway options in here. So you can see I do have Stripe connected. That's why this button says disconnect. If it was not connected, then it would say connect. And so once you're all connected, you can then go to your payments tab. And now notice how, and this is actually new, which is why it says new up there. You used to have to go to integrations and settings alone, but they are now putting payment specific integrations in the payments integrations tab up here. So uh, again, if I was on coupon code, so you can click on integrations and you can just integrate your Stripe straight away from right there. So um, let's go over to coupons though. So to create a new coupon code, you're going to click this blue, but blue button up here. And then so we can give the code a name. And then you can generate a coupon code. So a lot of times I do, I have a naming convention for this where I kind of dynamically build names based on the type. I would recommend you do something similar so that you don't have like a bunch of different coupon codes with all various different names floating around. So what I mean by that is if you generate a code, this is just going to give you a random code. And then let's say that we select for this one, we'll do fixed coupon instead of percentage, meaning that the price is going to be fixed. So let's just say we're going to give somebody $50 off and we're going to make that available starting today. We're not going to give it a start time or an end time or even an end date in this case. And I'll explain why. Because this coupon code is going to be specific to an individual. So right here where it says limit the total number of times the coupon can be redeemed, right? So if I want this to be like, hey, yeah, you know, Zach called and he needs a coupon code for something and I just want to make one for Zach, then I would just put one in here. And then this coupon code, I would just message to him directly because this coupon code can only be used one time. Now, technically, could Zach send the coupon code to someone else and let them use it? Yeah, he could do that, right? But that's fine because we're going to give that person just one code that they can use only one time. They can give it to their grandma or they can use it themselves. No problem at all. And so whoever the code is assigned to, I like to basically do it like this. Where I say fixed as the type. And then 50 Zach Gilliland. So that way I know that you know what i know what i just did basically so if i create this see there fixed 50 is that going and i know okay well 
that coupon code was created for Zach Gillen. Now, you could still do the same type of structure with the limitation, but instead of $50, we could do percentage. Say it's a $100 product, right? And so we're going to do a percentage coupon. 50% off is 50 bucks, same as before. We're starting it on Monday. So we'll do percentage 50. Is that going? Then we're going to set up this limitation to one again and then create that coupon code. And notice now we have a percentage based coupon code. Now it shows you here, check it out under the discount. That shows you percentage, that shows you dollar sign. So that means fixed. That means that we're giving a percentage off. Now, you can also edit these coupon codes at a later date, right? And you can change them if you want to change them without having to you know, delete them or something like that. Um, but you can also delete them. Now, it's in active stat status because it hasn't been used and there's no expiration date. But if it had been used or expired, notice how these are expired because they had a start date. And if we go here to edit, notice how they have start time and end time. Well, that time has since passed, right? So now they say expired. But these are going to be active until they're used. I could do the same thing though, and I could, I could say, you know, I'm going to message Zach. I'm going to tell him that he has 24 hours to use a coupon code, and if he doesn't use it in 24 hours, it's going to expire. So we could just set the end date to the 16th, and we could do the same thing. Like at uh, instead of 12 a.m., you know, we might want to do like 11:59 p.m. Like that. And so that will be active for 24 hours and then it will expire. So no problem there. Now notice how um, when we create a coupon code, there is another limitation option down here. So limit to select products on which the coupon can be apl applied. Now, I don't have any products in here and I don't want to create any products because it would actually end my stripe. But you know what I could do is I could just import one of these, I'll just import the product and the price. So now I have a, a price, you know, option in here. Now, if I go back to coupons and I go to create, and now I select limit to products. I don't know why this is not, I wonder, I might need to refresh. Alrighty. Let's see. No data still. Why is it not showing my product? I'm not sure why it's not allowing me to use the coupon code on this product. It might be because NStripe coupon codes are disabled for this product type. Nevertheless, you guys get the idea. If you have products in the system where coupon codes are enabled, when you do limit to select, you can select those products from down there just as a precautionary measure, you know, to make sure that if you don't want you someone to use the coupon code on one of your other products, they can't do that. Because technically, if you give them a coupon code like this and you don't put the product limitation on, then they can use the coupon code on any of your products. It doesn't matter if you sell multiple things. And so, you know, um, let's say you have one product that has uh, that costs $5,000, right? And another one that costs $100. Well, you give them a coupon code for 50% off and they get smart, right? And they try to use it on the thousand or on the $5,000 product and they just save themselves 2,500 bucks. So it's important if you have more than one product to make sure that you are limiting. Even if you're just sending it to one person, you can do both of these options. You can limit to one person and a limit to a product type. 
Now you don't have to use the one person, you know, uh, option there. You can also offer coupon codes for the first 10 people who do this task or a coupon code for anything that you want. And you can change the limit to 10. You can remove the limit and just say, Hey, everybody that purchases during this period of time, you know, it's a labor day sale, use the labor day, you know, coupon code, in which case, instead of doing a generation, you can just do like, you know, labor day 50 or something like that for, you know, um, Labor Day 50% off or something like that, like you see stores do, you know, where they make it kind of like catchy marketing, a little slogan in the coupon code there. So you can do something like that and you can turn off the limitation and run it between start date, end date, or you can still run it between start date and end date and leave the limitation on. Say first hundred people that buy on Labor Day between this day, so this isn't Labor Day, but you get the idea between this day and this day, like um, the system will automatically allow that coupon code to be used until the threshold has been hit and then the coupon code will expire itself and it'll no longer be active. So I think that is all that we need to cover on the coupon codes. Uh, you want to definitely make sure that you get, you know, well acquainted with coupon codes because you will most likely need to use them if you aren't using them already. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me in the community. Zach Gilliland. And I'm happy to help you out. Hope you all have a great Monday. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Want to learn Go High Level in a structured format? Check out the GHLacademy.com by Extendly. We guarantee to save you six months of wasted subscription costs for high level. Just visit the GHLacademy.com.